welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be taking a look at how to conduct balancing tests in Starter. And balancing tests may sound fancy to some, but it's actually not that difficult because it could actually just boil down to conducting a t-test. So let's show it. And uh, maybe there's another way to do it as well, but we'll see as we get along. So as you can see here, I've already set up a few things, and for today's uh, little example, we're going to be using the life expectancy data, data, data that can be found here installed with your starter package. So everybody should have it. In this particular case, we see regions, countries, population growth, life expectancy, the GNP per capita, and a measure for safe water. Now, in this particular case, suppose you want to check, for whatever reason, that there is a significant difference between uh, the life expectancy in Europe and Central Asia versus, for instance, North America and South America. You can basically conduct a balancing test between whatever you would like, and often it is used to check whether randomization went well between two groups or more, or simply just to check whether something is properly balanced, as the word might indicate. So in this particular case, we also just want to check whether it is balanced in terms of life expectancy between these two particular groups. So in order to conduct this, we actually may have to make a little dummy variable first. So let's start by doing so. We've seen that in another video, so that should not be too hard. We're just going to call it Europe, Central Asia, say ECA, just for short. We want it to be if region is equal to one, because we saw in the data now that region one corresponds to these two zones together. By doing so, we now get a nice variable here at the end, which is one and zero for the rest. And now we have everything we need. So let's first do it in the version of a t-test. So that's the first way you can do it because yeah, there's a second one and I prefer that. So in this case, we just do the t-test. So we wanna test whether say the life expectancy, which in this case here is just LEXP, is different between the two groups, which we're gonna do the by command here. You should just check the help file for t-test because you can do it in a lot of different ways. In this particular case, we just do it between two groups, namely the ECA. So if I do the following, we will now see a nice table here appear, and there's a lot of information. We even get the observation each of the two groups we consider, the means, the standard errors, standard deviation, and so forth. We even get the combined and the actual difference between the two. What is more important for us is what happens down here in the bottom. Here we see in the middle here, for instance, that the null hypothesis, or in this case here, the null hypothesis, whether it's zero, alternative two-sided, whether it is significantly different from zero. In this particular case, we see that it is significant at a 10% level. If we say in this case here that it would be smaller than zero, the difference, so a negative difference in this case, we see a p-value that is now significant at a 5% level. In any case, we do see some evidence that there's differences between the two groups. So that's pretty interesting. And of course, you can transform this in a nice table, or journal style, whatnot, to really showcase how this looks like. But I prefer actually a different approach, which is just the regression approach. And in this particular case, we're just gonna write up regression here as so a note. And we can do this just via direct command, because you can achieve exactly the same now by regressing life expectancy on just ECA. And then we get a nice table here below, looking like any other regression result that we may have. You even see here that the difference here, 223 and 223, it's exactly the same. And you also get a similar p-value here of 6.1. And you see that it actually corresponds very well to what we had before. Because remember, the standard null hypothesis shown in a regression is just whether the coefficient is significantly different from zero. Now, we have accomplished exactly the same, and this is just a matter of taste at this point. But one thing I think that is sometimes interesting to do here is that you can actually control for your standard errors when doing the regression version. So suppose now, that we expect, say, heteroskedasticity, you can always add in robust standard errors, which you cannot do with the t-test. As far as I know, you can always come and correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe there's some other way to do it, but I haven't heard of it yet. And you can indeed here just control for heteroskedasticity, whether there is or not. Because remember, if there weren't, then the standard errors, the robust standards will collapse just to be the regular ones. But that's a matter for your classroom, right? 
So in this particular case, we see here that there's two different ways of conducting this, and there's some advantages to the second one that makes me prefer doing the regression version. And also when you want to construct nice tables, you can simply just add this along the way when you are making your nice descriptive statistics and also show whether the two groups you're considering or more are balanced. So that was all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little class here in Stefan's Classroom and until next time. <laughs>